India's market news head. India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning, you're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a rainy Monday morning here in Mumbai and I think that is a big headline. There are lots of headlines to tackle over the weekend. There is of course sports, there is the swearing into the new government, etc, etc. But I think for me, rain's uh, are the top deal. I'm Prashant, with me my colleague Surabhi and Nigel guys. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning and indeed, I mean, usually when monsoons hit Mumbai, it's seen as a positive sign. Yeah. We are less than 50 points away from the all-time highs. This market has digested a lot in the last four or five days, right? Well, and uh, you know, just a few hours ago, we digested the win. You know, India oh, coming yes. out and defending <laughs> 120 runs against Pakistan. Unbelievable. What a game. What a game. What an effort, you know. You know I, I went to sleep and I woke up at, I don't know, I uh, got up at about 2, 2.30 or something and I then saw one. Uh, the one. I mean, yeah. how did that happen? So yeah, even was... I dozed off for a few minutes and I was like, no, these boys, they're going to come up, Trumps, you know. At, at seeing the total on the board, frankly, I gave up. And just look at the man on the screen, Bumra. You know, he's the man. You're bowling four overs, giving 14 runs and taking three wickets. Yeah. Out of 24 balls you bowl, for 15 balls, no one can score. Yeah. Unbelievable performance. Pumped up. Let's see uh, how the market's Actually, doing. I was though. flipping between tennis and uh, cricket yeah. because I mean, you French know, Open, and, and of course, Alcaraz won, yeah. which yeah. is uh, of course also the other big thing. Uh, anyway, there is a lot to say, uh, sort of tackle as we start this morning, and uh, you know, uh, let's uh, sort of tell you a few sort of top points which you need to know as we start uh, today's session. A new week, basically, because last week was so eventful, so large. Uh, yesterday, yesterday evening, there was a swearing in a ceremony at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, which happened, and. Uh, you know, you basically had uh, Modi who was sworn in as the Prime Minister along with 71 ministers. So, 72 total member team along with Prime Minister Modi. Uh, there is a cabinet meeting today, uh, you know, uh, at uh, 5 p.m. or so. Uh, and I think uh, portfolio allocations, etc. will happen after that. I mean, so essentially, portfolio allocation post that. It's actually, you know, the ministers who have sworn in, there are familiar older faces as well. But there are new faces as well. Lots of chief ministers, for example, have been sworn in. So, a lot of speculation and that is natural about who's going to get what portfolio. Will there be continuity? Will they, I mean, 100% for sure, there will be new faces. But what will they get? Uh, will they get some of the more market-facing, important, sensitive sort of, sort of sectors, which uh, I think, uh, you know, at least stock markets will watch very closely or is going to be some of the others? So, I think we'll know in a day or two, maybe even late, later today. So, uh, those are, of course, visuals from uh, the swearing and ceremony, ceremony which happened yesterday. So, there was... I mean, actually, uh, you know, real competition between the India-Pakistan match and, of course, the uh, swearing in ceremony. I think audiences, if you sample it, perhaps would, I mean, it'd be can't take it tucker, as they say. Well, uh, let's just uh, tell you what the market left off as, right? Almost at new highs. The Nifty basically uh, was at new highs. And from Tuesday's low, which is the election day sell-off, big sell-off, we're up 2,000 points on the Nifty. Uh, so, it's been a frenetic you know, a fast-paced, one-way kind of move from that lows. I mean, the only opportunity where the market kind of uh, stood still for a while is Wednesday morning, the day after the election verdict. I mean, we actually started higher. There was a bit of a dip, but that was it. And after that, it's been one way up. Uh, and, you know, we got some data uh, over, the, uh, over the last couple of days, which tells you, and we've been kind of pointing uh, to this, that H&Is perhaps are the big missing link, right? Uh, FIs have been big sellers, Locals, local institutions have bought, but the gap is still very, very large. So, who really uh, sort, of, uh, sort of filled that gap? Uh, so, retail as a category, which includes, and I have to add, add this, H&I, Super H&I, Family Offices, etc. They bought 21,179 crores on Tuesday, right? And that's essentially the missing link. Uh, because this is the number that I was saying, and the gap. Uh, fri uh, last five sessions, FII sold 13,700 crores. Locals uh, bought only about 5,500, 5,600 crores. So there's a big gap. But uh, the reason, of course, uh, we now know is that retail is a category, which is everybody non-institutions, basically. It's not just sort of you and me, but everything non-institutional is is, falls under retail. They were big, big buyers. Okay. Now, uh, you know, the big headline from the U.S. market is essentially the jobs data, which for the month of May has been extremely strong. 
uh, and uh, you know it kind of really flipped expectations around. Uh, so stocks did not really react too much. So not very much there. But yields, the U.S. 10-year yield, benchmark yield, which had been falling, it, it had fallen about 25, 30 basis points in about four, five days. In a single session, it jumped 15 basis points. That was massive. Dollar, it almost got to 105 levels. The high was 104.95 and then kind of ended around that. But that was a big three quarters of a percent move higher. And precious uh, metals on fri in Friday session and, you know, uh, what happens to gold, we look at microfinance uh, stocks, uh, gold finance stocks, beg your pardon. So I mean, watch out for this. But gold ended 4% lower. There was the headline out of China that the Chinese, the Chinese are not going to buy any more gold. And they're going to hold on to those levels for a while. Silver ended about 7% lower. So we'll see. Uh, this week, you've got the CPI number out of the US and the FOMC num uh, sort of event, which is on Wednesday. The FOMC decision, which is on Wednesday, no change is expected. But we'll hear from the Fed in terms of what they see all of this panning out like. Uh, as far as the levels are concerned, I would say after such a breathless, frenetic pace of the market, you basically had a, uh, you know, a, a couple of days of cool off and adjustment. That will, that perhaps is the most ideal kind of a situation scenario, but it's not played out like that. Uh, support comes in at the 20 hourly average, which is 22,816. Uh, for the Nifty Bank, uh, targets are, are 50,353, and then the high, which is of course 51,133. And support comes in at the 20 hourly, which is 49,135 and about 48,906. Uh, it's been an absolutely crazy uh, sort of roller coaster last one week and hoping for more calmer kind of markets. Specific stock specific action, there is a lot to track, which we will get to in a bit. Gift Nifty will come up on your screen, which gives you an indication of how the markets are likely to open. I think it's indicating a flattish to slightly uh, start in the red. 20 points lower is the implied open. Sorry. Karma markets, Prashant, somehow uh, the Indian market never manages that for more than like a day or two. So we'll see. We'll see if your wish is granted this week or not. But just another point on the you know non-farm payrolls data, just to yeah. contrast the number also with the previous print. Not only did it blow past expectations, uh, you know, this time around, the May print was 272,000. Expectations was about 190,000. The previous print, the April number was 175,000. So it's a massive increase, even month on month. Uh, the hourly wages number also ticked higher. It's touched 4.1%. Now, the reason maybe why the equity market didn't sell off as sharply was because of that one other number, the unemployment rate, because gradually that's now moved up to touch the 4% mark. So, you know, maybe that's something that the Fed is also going to take on board when it announces policy later this week. And perhaps that's why the equity market was not selling off, still holding on to hope because, the, the, I mean, U.S. markets have had a great finish, 2.5% on the NASDAQ. We're talking about a 1.5% on the S&P 500. On the dollar as well, while yields shot up, so did the dollar. The dollar was up almost 1% intraday on uh, on Friday in U.S. action after that uh, you know, NFP data. Uh, it's almost at the 105 level, so let's watch for this. Let's see what happens to the rupee as a reaction. Of course, back home, the roller coaster, at least the election news piece is over, barring, of course, portfolio allocation. That's the last you know big, uh, big leg that's remaining, and we should have some answers between today and tomorrow on that. The index is obviously just a, a gap up away from all-time highs. Now, whether that ad, whether that happens at open or not, or during the course of the the day, we'll find out. But it's it's basically one breath away from you know fresh highs. Uh, the uh, FII buying came back on Friday. That was heartening because in the up move of last week, the previous sessions were all sell sessions, starting from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Friday there was a reversal, and we had a net positive number of 4,400 crores. Let's see if this is the beginning of a trend or if it's a one-off. Uh, domestic institutions were, of course, sellers uh, on, on Friday itself. The monsoon's adding to uh, the sense of cheer because it's finally reached Mumbai and two days ahead of schedule. And usually, you know, there's some buying. There's, usually, there's some green on the screen when the monsoon arrives in Mumbai. So let's see if history repeats itself. Last but not the least, we need to watch out for uh, the uh, latest on the FNO market. And this is after a lot of, uh, you know, deliberations. The much-awaited move by the regulator to try and tighten the FNO market in the interest of investor protection is finally here. So what did SEBI do? It released a consultation paper over the weekend. It was sort of out on Saturday, I think uploaded on the site on Sunday. And they are saying that uh, the criteria of FNO inclusion needs to be tightened. And they've uh, uh, and it's uh, across a lot of different parameters. So they're going to tighten it on median order size, market-wide uh, position limits. The stocks delivery, that FNO stocks delivery value underlying stock in the cash market, uh, and all of these thresholds are being hiked. 
uh, the number of uh, days the stock should trade and it's a, at least 75 you know minimum trading sessions average daily turnover average daily open interest so a lot of these norms are being the thresholds are being increased what's not changing in this proposed paper is uh, you know the the marketplace itself the top uh, 500 stocks by market capitalization they will be uh, entitled to be uh, is included in the FNO market. SEBI's rationale, obviously, is that uh, it needs to uh, you know focus on investor protection. And they last revised the guidelines in 2018. So their contention is the market has really evolved and they want to ensure there are no illiquid stocks because that could lead to market manipulation. That's what the regulator is saying. Of course, we'll see uh, comments from industry uh, participants and market participants today. Let's see how that plays out. So I, as I said, enough to keep us busy. Never a dull moment in this market. Well, that's right. And we've been making this point that net institutions, they are buyers. So they're not big sellers. It's good the nifty can move up as well but the retail audience you know they are the force to reckon with and just take a look at the timing you know in the past week we saw the timing of the retail audience which includes large hnis as well and it was absolutely spectacular so we tracked the fi data on a day-to-day -day basis but now the nsc has gone ahead and given the retail category and it comes with a bit of a lag t plus two i think so so we have that data and just take a look at it on the day of the exit polls so well they went ahead and they sold into the bounce that we saw and the next day when everyone was fearful, there was big buying that we saw out there. Short point is the retail audience seems to be getting right. We have hi been highlighting this on the client side in the FNO market. But take a look at their action in the cash market uh, itself. And the FI data, well, that's the one we get on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving forward then, should we brace for a bit of consolidation? From the recent lows, the Nifty Nifty Bank already up between 8 to around 9%. I was going through the list from the lot of stocks in the broader markets, and they are up anything between 15, 20, 40% as well, just from the lows that we saw, the panic low that we saw on June 4th itself. So in the near term, should we brace for some consolidation on the headline index? And individual stocks, they'll continue to do a thing of their own. And also, as you all mentioned, well, the troika seems to be a little bit unfavorable. The dollar index is stronger. The yields have uh, moved up as well. And that could be, uh, you know, something that will be on our, our markets. Well, moving to the FI action on Friday itself. They added long positions. They covered short positions, which explains why the long positioning has now gone up to around 30% from around that 15% approximately because of the big swing factor. But I want to look at the FI number as well as the client data. You know, and that's the, uh, that's the story that, uh, you know, that's the... A graph that will tell you the picture. The FI short positions have come down drastically. From around 3.5 lakh contracts, it's come to around 1.9 lakh contracts. While the client long positioning has come down from around 3.3 to around 1.25 uh, lakh contracts. So what that's telling you is some part of that short covering has taken place and the long positioning, you know, the clients who have been talking about this, they get the timing right very, very well. They have taken some money off the table as well. So maybe in the near term on the headline index, we could see some bit of consolidation. But on stock futures, both of them continue to remain net long. And in fact, the FI net long positions on stock futures are at the highest we've seen in multiple months. Moving to the options data, 23,000 put continues to see a fair bit of addition. So that's the line in the sand because that one was very active on Friday's trading session as well. The premium has come down from around 200 rupees odd. So you plug in that number, 23,000 minus 200, 22,800 becomes an important mark as per the options data. And then you go deeper down, you have the 20 DMA as well. The theme that we'll be looking at is the FMCG space, but let's just pull up the Nifty Bank as well. Crucial level should come up for you on the screen. You should track both these two levels. The FMCG basket, it came back to life in the initial part of last week. And I'll continue to track that because good monsoon, well, that's what will aid rural economy. And that, in fact, will help volume growth as well. Going ahead, the new government could lean a little bit little bit more towards uh, you know rural economy consumption theme as well in comparison to CAPEX. So that's another point. And finally, valuation is pretty much in line with the five-year averages on stocks like Dabur, HUL, Britannia, Marico, as well as Asian Pain. So FMCG as a basket, I'll continue to keep an eye on them. Okay, absolutely, Nigel. Thank you very much uh, for that. You come back over here. Let's uh, kickstart things then with the equity call of the morning. Sai Mukherjee of Namura says that given political continuity, he retains their sector stance and portfolio and remains uh, highly stock specific. He says they are constructive on domestic sectors and prefer manufacturing or investment themes over consumption within defensives. He says they prefer IT services, healthcare over consumption. He says that they are overweight on financials, infrastructure oil and gas, telecom and power, where a correction should present a buying opportunity. Science says they have a year-end nifty target of 24,860 based on 20 times December earnings. Okay, well, we've got some uh, view coming in on the rupee as well. Uh, so this is uh, B. Prasanna of ICICI Bank who says dollar strengthened a surprisingly strong labor data in the U.S. pushed back expectations of a Fed pivot further towards the end of 2024, while other major central banks like ECB, 
Bank of Canada started cutting their policy rates last week. He says the rupee saw volatile sessions reacting to political developments at home. However, uh, he says recent dollar strength backed by stronger U.S. data will keep the currency under pressure in line with Asian and emerging market peers in the near term. He's expecting the RBI to continue to smoothen the volatility out in the rupee he sees between 83.3 to 83.7 to the dollar in the coming week. On bonds, Deep Prasanna says U.S. Treasury yields reversed the bulk of the recent rally and inched higher sharply as labor data printed strong and higher than market expectations. Back home, he says yields remain volatile and hardened initially on the back of election results, but then recovered as likely stability in government formation returned. He says the RBI MPC turned slightly dovish as one more member joined the demand for a rate cut and a change in stance. He expects yields to track global yields in the near term with a 10-year benchmark bond in a band likely to be in a band of 6.95 to 7.05%. Well, a lot of stock-specific action track for you. Get to that in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. Uh, but we're looking at MGL, Avaaz Finances, KEC, Realtel Corp, Raymond, Godavri Power and Ispath, Samvadana, Madhusen. All of them will be reacting to positive news flow. While we have three of them that will be reacting to negative news flow. They include PI Industries, Swiss Lawn, PTC India.